Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world? Again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Core TV News now live on all Androids. Welcome to Core TV Prime Time News. Download Core TV News app from your Play Store. Click on the menu to see all our top stories from politics, sports, business, foreign news, and live TV to watch us live on your mobile. I want to know why I should be believing them. You can also click on video to see all our YouTube videos. Core TV News, a 24 hour news station. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV. Live space than news. Core TV News, a 24 hour news station. Is it what, 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 it gets confrontational. Slap you in the face. Kill me, don't put words into my mouth. Whatever it is that will bring our ministry to this report, I say to hell on the cold digest. I want to know why I should be believing them. Every weekday, we we'll bring all of these together and take them to the court of public opinion. Everybody has a right in Nigeria. Where you are the judge. Thanks for staying the course. You're still on to Core Digest Extra. And so this is the second segment where we uh, take a look at the topic, State of the Nation Beyond Recession. And joining me on this segment is the man who has proven to himself and to the entire world that is really not going to take a no for an answer. And this is someone who has gone through depression and has come out of it strong and so he's using that same energy to actually inspire young Nigerians and tell them to be the better part of themselves and of course not look at what the country can do for them but what they can do for their country. Aside from being a motivator, a social entrepreneur, he's also an author, he's actually written his own book and so it's uh, with great pleasure that I welcome Olani Ayomridi to the program. Good morning. Good morning. Nice having you on the program. I'm so delighted to be on the program this morning. All right. Now, the topic says state of the nation beyond recession. All right. And, uh, of course, um, the word recession is uh, practically like the, the word you hear every day, every step of the way. So for you, uh, evaluating the current situation in Nigeria, what's your take, really? Well, I would start by saying that um, I wouldn't ignore the current situation, talking about um, recession and the decline in economic um, activities. But I would say this, that gradually Nigerians have started becoming very distracted because um, we are aware of this. This is not something that has um, just happened. It has been something that we suspected. Analysts and you know, a whole lot of people have talked about this. This has been a, like, a, like a projection that people have actually come up with, and then we should expect it. But one thing I would say about it, I'm just indifferent about it. I'm aware about the decline, but I'm saying that in spite of everything that's happening, we can actually think out solutions. Okay. And that's basically why I keep on telling youths basically that we all need to empower ourselves 
and invest in this country. Mm -hmm. That's basically what I think about the recession right now. Now, now, when you say invest, you know, money comes to mind. And so you're telling people who don't even have little to invest, how do they go about that? That's another distraction. Most people would say they do not have the capacity to begin something. While I started my um, project, I little did not have that much um, investment or what have you or the capacity to pay a whole lot of people who work with me. But there was something I realized that I needed to start somehow. I needed to start small. Most people want to be very big today. Most people want to be successful, but they do not want to go through that very humble lane. And it is very important. We might not have that much capacity right now, but we can start small. You do not need to have all the six, six figures before you start you know, something. Mm -hmm. So by saying that, I'm meaning, I mean we should go ahead and start small. Okay. In any, any areas you find yourself, where your areas of strength, it, you need to start somehow. You need to start small. That's what I'm talking about now. Okay. Now, it's, it's just interesting that you're someone who has actually experienced quite a, a number of practical experiences working with youths and the rest, doing the same thing, motivating them to be the better them. Yeah. And so what feedback do you get when you interact with Nigerian uh, youth? Oh, thank you very much. Um, about, um, I think that was October 1st, I was in Redimas University for a program tagged um, the University Inspirational Tour. And then I engaged a whole lot of youths there because it, the project was practically meant to empower youths and then I had speakers to go there. Now, in terms of feedback, there was one basic feedback I got that day and it really touched me. After going through the sessions, talking with them, empowering them, about a day after, I received a message on WhatsApp and the lady said, I have this gift of writing. And for a long time, I've been saying, wow, I have to start a blog. I want to be this. I want to be that. But I've been distracted about a whole lot of pressure and everything in school, how to combine and manage and all that. But until I shared my story, that was actually what sparked her up to start. As I speak at the moment, she has started the, the blog. She sent a link of the blog to me. And one thing that brings me joy is that I am getting feedbacks. It is not instant, but as time goes on, Every one of them are now seeing the reason to start something just the way I started. So, so far so good. Sometimes you get reactions of, how do we start? It's, this guy is not being realistic. How do we get money? Who is going to support? All these questions will cluster your mind. Mm -hmm. But you need to break through by believing in yourself. Mm -hmm. So most times I get varied um, responses. Sometimes they will tell you, wow, I think you need a consistent talk with me so that I can actually do this. And then I believe in, in youth a lot because I'm a youth. So I consistently follow up on every one of them. Mm. So, so far, they get in touch with me and also get in touch with them through my social handles. Mm. So that's basically it. All right. Now, uh, state of the nation, you know, it means different things to a different set of people. Yes. Uh, especially for the youth, it means unemployment at the peak. And so the issue of unemployment in the country now, thousands of graduates are on the street without jobs, four years, five years, still looking for jobs. You know, how do you encourage such people who are just looking for a place to actually practicalize what they've spent four, five, six years in university learning? Well, I, I, I'm always very, very touched when I see situations like that talking about unemployment. And then um, with the little I've read so far, one of the solutions to this has been entrepreneurship. Now, entrepreneurship is not something that we should just read in books. We need to practice it. While I was in my second year in the university, I wrote my first book. Now, I didn't just write the book. I was conscious of some things in my environment. I found out that there was no student author at that time. And then I went through the library. I found out a whole lot of things in the school. I was thinking about this, which says, beyond university, what next? I was preparing for my future because I could understand the state of the nation, even at that time. So I wanted to identify with the situation by being a problem solver. So I decided at that time to start researching. How can I solve this unemployment issue in Nigeria? How can I get youths to believe in themselves and start something? So I started my research. 
and then I started getting materials and then I put up my manuscript and I produced, I published my first book which I, was titled The Entrepreneurship Cloud, The Power of Entrepreneurship. I was able to bring a whole lot of experiences of business leaders in the world today. I was able to give my own life experiences as an instance and I also was able to capture realistic ways for them to start their business journeys. So I, I think what we need to correct now is that let's not be looking out to get jobs, but we should look out to create job opportunities for ourselves. Let's be job, um, um, let's, let's start creating jobs for people. Mm. Youths are blessed. Mark Zuckerberg came to Nigeria very um, recently, and then the all of the media was, wow. Everyone wanted to have a picture with him. Everyone wanted to say something about Mark Zuckerberg. In fact, everyone wanted to have a selfie with, with Mark. But Mark has been able to create something that the world is thinking about. The products and services today are launched on this platform. It has created a whole lot for people's businesses all over the world. Now we need to think out solutions. We need to think about what we can do to contribute to Nigeria. It is, it is something that is a responsibility. It has to be in us. Mm. We need to create that opportunity to see ourselves beyond the way the state of the nation is. Yeah, yeah. Opportunities basically are like bosses. Each one goes, it takes a sensitive mind to find out that, wow, this is a boss. Let me go in and then it takes me down to my destination. So we need to be consciously involved and get ourselves to know what really our passion is. Oh, interesting. Uh, and what, what you said is actually very commendable. And it's so interesting that the guest I had on earlier is someone who has quite a very strong drive. Oh, you know, is actually into looking how to solve the power challenge in Nigeria through a, a thunder lightning theory oh, that he has um, con um, conceptualized, basically. But one thing he, he, I noticed from what he said is that even with the initiative as laudable as the project is, he's not gotten any support, really. He's been trying to use his own money to do everything. In fact, he actually started his own uh, generator booster device to actually raise funds on this project. And he said he's gone to several places all these days. Oh, this is good. Uh, we like it. But nothing comes out of it. And this is a capital-intensive project he's working on. So, you know, for people who have that drive, who have that passion to actually do something great, but are really not getting the support they need to take them to the next level, you know, what advice do you give to them? Okay. Um, one of the greatest things I've realized in my life is the people who are great today have gone through a lot. Now, one thing I would just say to anyone who is facing this is stay at it. Since it's your passion, and since it's something that you see would be a solution, stay at it. You see, success doesn't happen by coincidence. It's a, ho a whole lot of hard work must have been put into it. Most people get distracted by money most times, and then they make it a criteria. Yes, it is good to have money. Who says that I do not want to be a rich man? But the first thing I put in my mind is how many impacts have I made? Mm. Now, I know it's a challenge talking about all those capital intensive projects people get themselves into. One thing I say is once it's not working, check your approach again. What are the things that you have not put into these things? What are the things that you need to add? Do you have a mentor? Do you have somebody you're looking at? Do you have people that actually believe in your dream? You do not need the people who have all that money to believe in you. But you have a community of people. Start small. And then, as time goes on, make sure you are consistent. Most people that start, that start a whole lot of things like this, they are not consistent. Once they do not get what they want, they leave it and try something else. It doesn't work like that. We need to be consistent in what we are doing. We know there's a challenge. We know the country is going through a lot. We know many people don't want to believe. Yes, we are aware of it. Mm. But what matters is consistency. And also, check out your approaches. Check out the things you are doing. Make sure that what you're doing is a realistic one, is sustainable. Sustainability has become a problem. Most projects do not have sustainability plan. So one of the things is, let's see these as challenges. It says tough times don't lie. Only tough, tough people, people do. do. And then this is not a, um, um, talk is cheap. <laughs> you need to be consistent. And that's basically my summary for that. All right. You, you know, you just put a question from me now. And right. it's going to be personal. I'd like you to take us through 
your depression experience? You know, how did it start? And how did you glide over it to be this Olani that we <laughs> see today, you know, talking, you know, be a solution to every problem you, you encounter? All right. Um, I'm always delighted whenever I'm asked this question because um, Nigerians do not like talking about depression, even on TV. They don't want to talk about it, but yet we know that we go through newspapers and see a whole lot of issues of people committing suicide. Something must have led to that. I was in my final year in the university and I suffered a whole lot of things. Talking about cluster of the mind, I had issues with understanding what was going to be the next phase. A whole lot of things, activities that actually come into my mind and clustered my mind and made me feel that probably there was no way out of it. And then I felt disconnected from life itself and I felt wow, what's the purpose of education? And that, this was after I'd written my book, I'd gotten awards in the university and all that. And then I was called one day by my, um, my provost and said, me, you're not really in this place anymore. You need to leave school for a while. Just get yourself back. I'll call your family. They take you and all that. And then I had to defer my admission at that time. And um, I left school for a session. Now, to many people, the, the, the notion to be, he might not be able to come back. Depression kills faster than HIV AIDS, I must tell you. It, it, it takes you away. You don't believe in yourself anymore. It disconnects you from life. And the only thing, the climax of it is, the only thing that comes to your mind will be, I need to kill myself. Mm. And that's why today we go through a whole lot of things happening globally, people committing suicide. Depression is a, a very important issue Nigerians mo must look at. Youths in the university are going through a lot, a lot of things. But I give thanks to God that I'm here today to share this story. I was going through a lot of things, and then I had a family to stand by me. I imagine people who don't have a family. Mm. And then I, I had to identify with the situation, and at the point I had to believe in myself again, mm. that there is a future, I have a lot of destinies attached to mine. And then when I saw that, Something came to my mind that I needed to do something about depression in the world today. And that was how I started the Inspire Nigeria mm -hmm. project. Inspiration got me when I was depressed. Inspiration got me out of depression. And today, I love what I do. I graduated from the university this year after I deferred and went back. And then I studied mass communication, which was the choice course I wanted to do all my life. And I'm delighted and I'm happy doing what I love to do. Wow. And then inspiring youths. I'm really, really happy to share the story this morning. That's very lovely. Now, you know, from, from what you said, I, I, I could just imagine how tough this period was for you. You know, what you were thinking about. What would you like to ask? You said you were thinking of quite a number of things, you know, what the world will hold for you after leaving school, what will happen. What led you to those thoughts? Did you see people's life go... Go, go busy. Did you see people become failures and so you, you were scared of your life becoming like that? Um, growing up, basically, um, I used, my mom used to tell me I have a lot of dreams. And someone who has a lot of dreams will definitely go through challenges. The road to success is not a very smooth one. And so you have ups and downs. Mm. And then for me, I had a lot of dreams. Be, dreams that were bigger than me. And then I guess I had a cluster of those things all over my mind and then little things led to little things and before I knew it, it took over my mind. Okay. Now I can't say in details this is exactly what it was but I know basically I was not just myself anymore mm -hmm. but I, like I said, I give thanks to God, I'm out of it and I'm doing what I love now. All right. Okay, uh, we'll be rounding off very soon so I'd like to open the phone lines for you to be a part of this conversation if you'd like to ask questions. Simply now the numbers showing on your screen or contributions to what we're taking a look at, state of the nation beyond recession. And uh, so far, Olani has been telling us how we could look away from what is currently happening around the siege as distraction and learn to think and focus more. All right, now to you, Olani. Usually I've heard people who say that there is a thin line between thinking and worrying. You know, People are advised to think and see how to create some things. But, you know, when you think of how to be great and you also think of how do I get this money to make this thing or how do I go about it, you know, worrying sets in. So how do you draw the line? 
between these two. So one doesn't get, one doesn't become a victim of depression because that's where it all starts from. Right. Um, I have an acronym I use. It's a SPAB. S stands for seeking for information. The P stands for plan. The A stands for act. And then the last one is B, which says believing in yourself. Okay. Let me just cut you short. Let's take Ekene. Ekene, good morning. Good to have you join us again. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. Yeah, my brother, good morning. Good morning. I can hear you. You see, uh, in the uh, state of Nigeria, the problem we have in Nigeria, in Pakistan, is those living the country are sick and they don't want to leave the power to The situation of this man is there. There is no people in Nigeria that can do except only the Lord And now they have been built out of all Tell me, how can they become more power? Buhari has ruled Nigeria for two times. As a military rule, I'm your battle uh, election president, and now as a civilian rule. Tell me, the young man that you are saying, that they, have, that is, they have a future, that great one that to help, to help a small company that lives in the government. All right. They're all thinking about money, thinking about and they're doing Thank you. Thank you so very much, Ekene. So, Thank you so very much for that contribution. Okay, Ikene was actually going through how uh, the government doesn't encourage youth to be the best they can be. But of course, I guess that's what you're actually discarding, mm -hmm. that, you know, you have to look beyond that. Exactly. And forge ahead. Forge ahead. Regardless of the situation. Yes. Okay. Now, the acronym you mentioned again, could you go through Okay, it? I was talking about the S, which is seeking for information, the P, which says plan, the, the A is act, and the last one, which is B, which says believing in yourself. Mm -hmm. Whatever worry it is, if you don't believe yourself and believe in what you want to do, I'm telling you, passion actually takes worry out. Sometimes I feel distracted about things happening around me, and then worry sets in. So worry just doesn't change anything. Mm -hmm. Worry doesn't solve recession in Nigeria right now. Worry doesn't change anything. I gave myself this understanding right from the day I started Inspire Nigeria Project. I do not want any worry to come through my mind. I am aware of what is happening around me, but that should not be a problem. That should not deter me from what I want to do. So let's look at it. Thinking is good, yes, but you know you're aware of worry, but do not allow it setting into your passion or into what you love to do. Okay, so let's take a look at governance in Nigeria. Uh, of course, uh, there are quite a lot of things happening in the country. Okay, l before I take the let's check Ebe. Yeah. Good. Sister, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you join us. Yeah, and uh, I thank your guest there. All right. It's true. Uh, we are into reception. Let me go straight to the point. We have young guys that can make things happen. Honestly. You brought one guy, and the guy, he has explained everything, how he will do to generate life. Do you understand? And this young guy now, he has come again. And we know that we have vibrant guys. But now, why all that are building and all that are destroying? Can you tell me, this guy now will study to make things better. But all that are rearing cattle. Killing people and they destroy them. How do you think that the country will move forward? And uh, are we not ashamed of ourselves by entering Nigeria? A creation of British. A man can invent something. A man can manufacture. But a man cannot create. Creation goes by God. Mm. Why we, we are proud to enter Nigeria? Are we not ashamed of ourselves? Okay. People are speaking in correct English. When you see them, the person will say Nigeria is a nation. Didn't them know the meaning of nation? Why are they study and they don't know the meaning of nation? I am ashamed of myself at times. If I see our young guys, just they are making points, but when they say our nation, who tells you that Nigeria is a nation? A contraption created by white men. Do you think that they created right. Nigeria by Thank our you. own group? Thank they you. Created it by 
And it, thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Did you hear what he said? I probably you could tell. Yeah, so. uh, well, AJ was talking about um, how he's not proud of Nigeria as a nation. It's been the creation of the white men and stuff. But, but for me, I think it's just still dwelling on the problem. And you, you also mentioned the issue of uh, the Fulani headsmen attack, you know, killing and stuff. So he said, if people like you are are trying everything you can to make Nigeria better and some people are destroying it, then how does that add up to making um, the country a better place? To um, like I earlier said, these things are happening. If we stop what we are doing, it will become worse. Now, these things are distractions, but if we can actually take our mind off these distractions, these people would stop. Mm -hmm. If more people like me can start and stand up to this, to change this country, I tell you, many people will have no choice than to be doing things that are positive. Because most times when we talk about this thing over and over and over again, we do not change it. So I believe in the little community you find yourself, be the change there. Okay. So let's talk about governments in Nigeria. All right. For you, what do you make of how the country is being governed? Wow. I most times do not talk about um, the governance and what have you because... I am very careful when it comes to that area. And then I know I have to contribute my quota as a Nigerian. Now, in, in, the, in terms of the governance, I have read a lot in the newspapers and newspapers. what have you. Okay, but I just think, before okay, you continue, right. let's just take Kenneth. Good morning, Kenneth. Good to have you join us. Go ahead, please. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, good to meet in the studio. I am Kenneth, I'm from Enugu. Yeah. Actually, um, I've been following your program, Maurice. Right? I'm, I'm so impressed that uh, we have talented youth in the country. And uh, so worried about that. The government has no support about what's going on. So, and uh, the statistics of talented youth. I watched the side and side of the studio a few minutes ago. It's a really loaded. Yeah, it's loaded. And uh, you know, he told you that he made the force to you know, get the Minister of Power here in Unigo. But all that is effort to prove their body. Mm. No. Actually, Kenneth, what I tell you that I'm a young entrepreneur. Okay. I know the effort I've made you know, to gather youths to groom them. But you know, there's no support from anywhere. So government are not happy. Mm. You try your best and do everything. Financially, to grow a, a, a kind of a project here in Nigeria is very, very difficult and costly. Mm. Because the, the materials, raw materials are not here. You can't get them easily or locally here. You order them online, sometimes you buy, order online, yeah, abroad. You know? All these are, are not easy. But so make their own parts and not making their own efforts. So what do you want the youth to do? That's sometimes when you look at it, you know, things, if you know, Something to buy yourself, just end up killing yourself. Sometimes that, all these uh, energies you are seeing everywhere just because things have tried, 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 right now with no way. Yeah. Not having any other option. Some, some of them join, cause, cause, join and probably in cause of frustration. So I, I'm talking at you tomorrow, you won't help us. You need to act. You need to act. Clearly, I, I love the young man at Judge Bay. I'm just so impressed. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Kenneth, for, for speaking with us. Kenneth is also an entrepreneur. We see he's doing all his best to make ends meet and, of course, to make an impact, but he's not getting support from government. And so, I would encourage him to continue. Okay. I would encourage him to continue because we are going to get there. Yeah. Nigerians is going to get there. Everyone in this country would actually be the best they would be if they can continue. Let's stop complaining. We understand these things are happening, but let's please believe in ourselves and keep on doing that thing that we have passion to do. Mm -hmm. That's really, really... When we're talking about governance, I would say something that I'm a bit careful about what I say about it. Okay. But I would say that I believe that the president is aware of what he's doing. Let's believe in him. Let's trust him. Let's see what comes up out of this recession. I, I told a friend yesterday that... After this recession, probably there's a big picture and a great 
end that will bring about the next level for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So let's just believe in this change, and <laughs> the change is definitely coming to be very soon. All right, thank you so very much. Yeah. Just before we let you go, final words from you. All right, the strength of our society lies in knowledge and human capacity, and then I would encourage every youth in Nigeria to please and please look out for your passion, develop it, and help to use it change Nigeria. Okay. Thank you so very much, Olani Ayerije, a social entrepreneur, an author, and one who is so passionate about inspiring and motivating Nigerians. So it's a wrap on this segment, and after this, we'll be going into the entertainment industry where we have an up-and-coming artist take us through his world as a young Nigerian who is trying to make a headway in the entertainment industry. Stay with us. Call that just extra. We'll be right back.